Did you know that you can use AutoGPT to generate images for you? In this video, I will show you how you can set up image generation in AutoGPT. And as an added bonus, I will show you how you can generate images for free using stable diffusion within AutoGPT. Let's get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and set up AutoGPT on your machine. I've created a video that shows you the correct way to set up AutoGPT, so I recommend following the steps in that video and then coming back to this video. But here is a quick montage of how it's done. Go to this website and install Git. Go to python.org and install Python version 3.10. Create a new folder on your PC, open the command prompt, and then execute this command to download a stable release of AutoGPT. Within the downloaded folder, find the file called .env.template and rename it to .env. Then go to platform.openai.com, click on Personal and then View API Keys. Then click on Create New Secret Key, give it a name like AutoGPT, copy the key, then open the .env file in any text editor like Notepad or VS Code. Either is fine, for this video I'll be using VS Code. Then look for the variable called openai underscore api underscore key. Then replace this text with the key that you copied from openai. And go ahead and save this file. Then back in our folder, look for a file called run.bat and run this file. Run.bat will install all dependencies for AutoGPT and immediately execute AutoGPT. Alternatively, you can install the dependencies by executing pip install r requirements.txt and after that's installed, we can run AutoGPT by typing python m auto gpt. At this point, you should have a working instance of AutoGPT. Let's go ahead and look at how we can get AutoGPT to generate images. So let's talk about image generation. When executing AutoGPT, you should see a response like this, saying, I want AutoGPT2. At this point, we can type our prompt. Let's ask GPT to generate an image for us. Generate a pixel art image of a dog wearing a hat. Let's try to execute this. After executing this, AutoGPT assigned a name for our agent called Pixel Art GPT. It also assigned a role saying that it is an AI that specializes in creating pixel art images for a variety of purposes, including game development, graphics design, and more. But unfortunately, the goals are not quite correct. The first step might be fine, because in the first step it's saying, create a pixel art image of a dog wearing a hat that accurately reflects your desired specifications, including size, color, and style. But from the second step onwards, it's not quite correct. And if we have a look at the action, AutoGPT is saying that it needs to use Google to run a query for what are the specifications for creating a pixel art image of a dog wearing a hat. This doesn't sound quite right to me, but either way, let's keep going. So in the user input, I'll type yes. And now it seems like AutoGPT really has no idea what to do. In fact, in this scenario, AutoGPT is saying that I will send a tweet to the client to request more information. This is complete bogus. So let's try something else. I'm going to press Ctrl C to stop this execution. And let's try and run a new instance of AutoGPT. So AutoGPT will ask us if we want to re-execute this scenario again. I will just say no. Instead of having AutoGPT automatically assign the goals, let's try to manually capture the goals instead. So I will type dash dash manual. Now we can manually specify the goals. For the AI name, I will call it pixel art GPT. You can call it whatever you want. For the role, I will say pixel art GPT is an AI that generates pixel art based on the user's input. For goal one, let's try generate a pixel art image of a dog wearing a hat. I'll just leave goal two empty and let's press enter. For the budget, I'll just press enter. So what we can see here is that for the thoughts, AutoGPT is correctly stating that it needs to generate an image. However, it then says that it can use Python's Pillow library to create the image and it will have to install the library first. So this is telling me that AutoGPT realized that it does not have the ability to generate images by itself and 
Therefore, it will attempt to create some Python script to generate the image, which is not what we want. We want AutoGPT to natively generate AI images for us. So let's set that up. I'm going to close the session. Then back in our .env file, we can go down to this section here for image generation provider. At the moment, all of these variables are commented out. And basically this hashtag at the start of the line indicates that this line is commented out and not seen by AutoGPT. So in order to make the image generation provider available to AutoGPT, all we need to do is uncomment these variables by removing these hashes at the start of these lines. Let's quickly discuss these two variables. In image provider, we can specify the image generation model that we'd like to use. We can see a list of all the supported models by going to the AutoGPT website and then clicking on the image generation link to the left of the page. Here we can see models like DAL-E, Hugging Face and Stable Diffusion. DAL-E is an image generation model supplied by OpenAI, which will also use your OpenAI API key for generating images. And please note that there is a small cost involved for generating images using DAL-E, and the cost will depend on the image size that you provide. However, we will have a look at how you can generate images for free using Stable Diffusion later on in this video. For the image size, you have three options, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, and 1024 by 1024. To keep the cost low, let's leave the image size as 256. Let's go ahead and save our .env file. Let's then start up a new instance of AutoGPT by running run.bat. AutoGPT is going to ask us if we want to re-execute the previous agent. For this, I will just say yes. And this time, AutoGPT should realize that it now has access to the DAL-E model for generating images. Let's try this out. The first thing you will notice is the thoughts are very different. AutoGPT is correctly stating that it will now generate an image of a dog wearing a hat, but because the agent realized that it has access to DAL-E, it now states that it will use the generate image command to generate the image. And for its plan, it's saying it will use the generate image command with a prompt dog wearing a hat, and it will save the generated image to a file. So in the input, I'm going to press Y to authorize the command. And now we are getting this response saying command generate image returned. And it's saying that the file was saved to this location. So let's go to that folder to see our image. Back in the AutoGPT directory, let's go to AutoGPT. Then we'll go to AutoGPT workspace. And within workspace, we can see this JPEG file. And after opening this file, we get our image with a dog wearing a hat. However, this is not a pixel art image. So let's see if we can get AutoGPT to generate a pixel art image for us instead. So let's go and execute a new instance of AutoGPT and let's try to run this again. AutoGPT is telling us that it will generate an image using the generate image command, which is correct. However, if we look at the arguments, we can see the prompt that's being passed to DAL-E. This prompt is clearly missing the instruction to generate a pixel art image. So in the user input, let's guide our agent and let's say for the prompt, you need to include pixel art as well. And after providing some guidance to AutoGPT, we now get the text pixel art included as well. So for the user input, let's say yes. Unfortunately, this is the nature of using AutoGPT. In some instances, it's very good at creating its own prompts, but sometimes we need to guide it to get the desired result. Let's have a look at the image that was generated. So let's go to the AutoGPT folder. Let's go to the workspace folder. And within workspace, we can see this little pixel art image showing up. And that's awesome. This means you can now include image generation as part of your AutoGPT's goals. For instance, you could ask AutoGPT to go online, find an upcoming holiday, and then generate an image in the style of that holiday. But let's now have a look at how we can generate images for free. Because we are currently using the DAL-E API, there is a cost involved for each and every image that we generate. But one of the awesome features of AutoGPT is its ability to integrate with different models. So let's have a look at how we can integrate AutoGPT with one of the most popular image generation models 
called Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is a mind-blowing open source model for generating AI images. And the nice thing about it is it runs locally on your machine and it's completely free. There are plenty of videos online to show you how you can set up Stable Diffusion. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I will give you a basic overview of how to set up Stable Diffusion locally and I'll show you how to integrate it with AutoGPT. I will also leave a link to this GitHub repo in the description of this video. And I recommend that you follow the installation instructions on this GitHub page for your operating system. But basically all you have to do is go to this repository, click on code and copy this URL. And then you need to create a new folder and I'll just use this AutoGPT folder. And then you need to open the command prompt by running CMD on Windows. And in the command prompt, simply type git clone followed by the URL to the repository and press enter. This will now download Stable Diffusion to your PC. We can close the command prompt and go to the folder that was downloaded. Then within the Stable Diffusion folder, find the file called webui-user and double click that file. This file will go ahead and set up the virtual environment and install all dependencies for Stable Diffusion. Please note that this step can take quite a while to complete. So I will skip ahead for the purposes of this video. After installation is complete, you should see a message like this, saying that Stable Diffusion is running on the following URL. We can now play with Stable Diffusion by opening up this URL. It should look something like this. Let's try to generate an image by adding our prompt to this text to image text area. So in the prompt, I'll enter a pixel art image of a dog wearing a hat. We don't have to change any of these settings. Let's simply go ahead and click on generate. The time it takes to generate the image will greatly depend on your machine. But after a short while, we will get our response back. And this seems to be working just fine. So now let's have a look at how we can integrate AutoGPT with Stable Diffusion. We can actually go ahead and close this browser window and I'll also close the command prompt window as well. Before we move on to AutoGPT, there is one change that we need to make to Stable Diffusion in order to allow external applications to call Stable Diffusion. What we need to do is find the webui.bat file, then open it up in a text editor, then below this line that says set error reporting to false, add a new line and type set command line args equal dash dash API and then save this. Let me explain what that does. We can start up Stable Diffusion by double clicking on this webui.bat file. You should get this message saying launching webui with arguments dash dash API. This means that we have now enabled APIs on Stable Diffusion and external applications like AutoGPT can now call the APIs on Stable Diffusion to generate images. You don't have to do this, but I just want to show you for interest's sake. If we open up this URL in our browser, we can add the following to our address, slash docs. And this page will show you all the available APIs on Stable Diffusion. So this way, you can call Stable Diffusion from your applications. Either way, let's set up AutoGPT to use Stable Diffusion. It's very important that you keep this session running in order for AutoGPT to call Stable Diffusion. So please do not close this command prompt window. Then let's go back to our AutoGPT folder and let's open our .env file in a text editor. Now what we can do is instead of using DAL-E as the image provider, we can replace DAL-E with the Stable Diffusion web UI instead. And because there's no cost involved, you are welcome to set the image size to whatever you want. But of course, larger file sizes will take longer to generate. So for this demo, I'll just use it on 256. Let's save the .env file and let's start up a new instance of AutoGPT. I'm actually going to leave this prompt as is and just run it again. But this time it should use Stable Diffusion to generate the image and not DAL-E. But in order to demonstrate this, I'll actually put the two command prompts side by side. So now we have AutoGPT running on the left and Stable Diffusion running on the right. And what will happen is when AutoGPT calls Stable Diffusion to generate the image, we should see a progress bar on the Stable Diffusion prompt, indicating that Stable Diffusion is generating the image. So 
Back in the AutoGPT prompt window, I'll simply press yes. So now AutoGPT is saying that it will run the command generate image passing in the prompt dog wearing a hat. Unfortunately, it's missing the pixel art keywords again. So we could guide it in the input prompt by typing, please include pixel art in the prompt. And this time it is including pixel art in the prompt itself. So let's just type Y to approve this command. And please take note of what's happening in the stable diffusion prompt window. Let's press Y and we can see something generating in the stable diffusion window indicating that it was indeed stable diffusion that was used for the image generation. So let's go and have a look at the image that was generated by clicking on AutoGPT, AutoGPT workspace, and indeed we got an image that was generated using stable diffusion. I hope you found this video useful. If you do like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and please like this video. Please have a look at my channel where I've got other videos covering AutoGPT as well as some other AI related topics. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.